The ground beneath Mount St. Helens has begun to tremble again. It started quietly, faint shivers deep under the cascades, the kind most instruments barely catch. But as dawn broke over Washington's evergreen wilderness, the data began to tell a different story. Nearly one hundred small quakes had rattled the region, culminating in a magnitude 2.3 event, centred roughly 38 kilometres south-southeast of Morton. Shallow, sharp, only nine and a half kilometres beneath the crust. For the average observer, it was just a blip on a chart, a digital heartbeat buried on a geological website. But for those who remember the year 1980, such a tremor feels like a ghost returning. A whisper from the past, from that morning when the mountain tore itself apart in the most violent volcanic eruption in modern U.S. history. Could it be happening again? Or is the volcano simply breathing, shifting, remembering? In the shadow of the Cascade Range, the stillness feels deceptive. Beneath those quiet forests, ancient pressures are testing the limits of the Earth's crust, heat and gas, molten rock pressing against stone. Mount St. Helens isn't merely part of the landscape. It's part of a system, the Cascadia Volcanic Arc, a chain forged by the relentless subduction of the Juan de Fuca Plate beneath North America. It's a process so slow we rarely sense it, yet so powerful it can reshape continents. Every tremor carries a message from below, an encrypted signal written in seismic waves. The current swarm, small but persistent, isn't random. It follows a rhythm geologists have come to recognize, clusters of microquakes marking the movement of fluids or gases, the cracking of brittle rock, or the faint upward pulse of magma itself. The quake that struck on October 15th may sound insignificant, but its depth, nearly 10 kilometers or about 6 miles, puts it squarely within the same zone that once gave rise to the eruption of 1980. And that's what makes scientists uneasy. Back then, the sequence began much like this. Tiny quakes, low rumbles, bursts of steam, each a warning, subtle and patient. Then, one morning, the mountain gave way. A landslide of epic scale triggered an explosion that flattened forests, erased rivers and sent ash circling the globe. It was not just a geological event. It was a reminder that even a mountain could vanish in a single breath. Forty-five years have passed, yet the Earth remembers its own patterns. At the Cascades Volcano Observatory, rows of monitors now glow with data, frequencies, depths, waveforms. Each tremor plotted on a digital map creates a constellation, a pattern that seems to trace a channel connecting the upper magma storage region to deeper reservoirs below. Something is moving. Not yet fast, not yet violent, but undeniably alive. The crust beneath Mount St. Helens is fragile, carved and resealed over countless eruptions. When magma pushes upward, it doesn't always reach daylight. Sometimes it halts mid-journey, forming frozen veins of rock called dikes or sills. The stress that follows releases through small earthquakes, the Earth's way of easing tension. But when these swarms cluster along older fractures, they may also signal that magma is searching for a path upward. That's the delicate balance scientists are now watching, the threshold between readjustment and reawakening. Beneath the mountain's tranquil snowfields, heat still pulses. Sensors buried in the slopes pick up minute temperature fluctuations, changes in gas composition, even the faint expansion and contraction of the ground. The magma reservoir lies roughly 10 to 15 kilometers deep, mostly solidified into a crystalline mush. Yet from time to time, new molten injections from the mantle below reignite that chamber, like blood flowing into a dormant heart. 
Each pulse adds heat, gases, and pressure. And when that pressure can no longer be contained, the mountain will respond. The current swarm might be the echo of such a pulse, magma moving through old scars, or superheated fluids forcing their way through fractures. Sometimes it's impossible to tell the difference. Magmatic quakes tend to ring at low frequencies, their vibrations long and resonant, the sound of liquid sloshing in unseen chambers. Brittle rock quakes snap sharply, high and quick. So far, the signals beneath St. Helens have been crisp, impulsive, the sound of rock breaking, but arranged too neatly, too deliberately, to be dismissed as random. Satellites may soon confirm the truth. INSAR readings, ultra-sensitive radar measurements, can detect even a few millimetres of uplift, revealing when the ground begins to swell. As of now, no major bulging has been detected, but geologists know that deformation can begin subtly. The Earth always moves slowly, before it moves violently. Those who live within sight of the volcano describe moments of strange silence, birds vanishing from the trees, the forest holding its breath. Some have reported faint rumblings, as if thunder were trapped underground. Whether those sounds are physical or psychological, they feed a sense that something beneath Mount St. Helens is once again stirring from its long sleep. And here's what makes the mystery deeper. This volcano does not exist in isolation. The entire Cascade Arc, Rainier, Adams, Hood, and Glacier Peak is connected through a shared subduction zone and possibly even by deep, partially molten pathways. Some researchers have begun to notice faint seismic upticks near Mount Adams and Mount Hood as well. Coincidence? Or the first hint of a larger awakening beneath the Pacific Northwest? After the 1980 eruption, Mount St. Helens slowly rebuilt itself. By the early 2000s, a new lava dome had risen within its crater, solid proof of magma still feeding upward. Then, just as quietly, the activity ceased. For nearly 20 years, the instruments fell silent. Until now. What we're witnessing might be the first whisper of return, a prelude, not yet a climax. Nature never repeats its songs exactly. It remixes them in new tones, new tempos. If Mount St. Helens awakens again, it might not explode. It could ooze lava, reshape its crater, or simply sigh out gases and steam for years. Yet even a gentle awakening could alter the surrounding landscape and climate reminding millions across the Pacific Northwest that their peace lies atop an active and unpredictable world. Exactly 45 years after the eruption that humbled science, the mountain is murmuring once more. And beneath the snow and forest floor, deep within the crust, something unseen is on the move, ancient, relentless, patient. But what exactly is it? Is it magma rising toward the surface again? Or is there something deeper, stranger, whispering from the very mantle, a pulse from Earth's molten heart? The tremors keep coming. The instruments keep humming. And Mount St. Helens, silent for decades, may be preparing to speak again. If the mountain's restlessness feels familiar, that's because it follows a rhythm older than human memory a slow pulse that echoes through the cascades like the ticking of the planet's clock. Each quake, each tremor, may be part of a grander cycle, one that reaches far beyond Mount St. Helens itself. The Cascade Arc is a factory of fire, fueled by the slow descent of the Juan de Fuca plate beneath North America at roughly four centimetres or about one and a half inches per year. As that oceanic crust sinks into the mantle, it carries seawater and sediments that melt to form magma. Over centuries, that magma rises, accumulating, cooling, erupting, rebuilding, 
and when it stalls, it waits, sometimes for lifetimes, until the next pulse sets it in motion again. Mount St. Helens may now be entering that stage once more. Instruments have recorded faint, low-frequency tremors deep beneath its base, a kind of subterranean heartbeat, similar to the signals that preceded dome-building eruptions between 2004 and 2008. Back then, lava crept steadily into the crater, slowly refilling the wound carved by the 1980 blast. The current quakes, subtle and rhythmic, may mark the beginning of a similar process. Yet this time, something feels different. Regional patterns hint that the entire subduction system might be recharging. Since mid-2024, volcanoes across the Pacific Northwest have shown slight increases in seismicity. From Mount Hood to Rainier, even down to the Southern Cascades, the crust is whispering. Not loudly, but together. Could the recent St. Helens swarm be part of a broader awakening? Tectonic shifts beneath the Cascadia subduction zone, the same fault that unleashed a magnitude 9 quake more than four centuries ago, may be altering pressures across the entire arc. Each movement offshore could reverberate inland, subtly squeezing the magma reservoirs of multiple volcanoes. The timing aligns too well to ignore. And there's another more profound possibility, one that geophysicists have only recently begun to explore. Deep beneath Mount St. Helens may lie an enormous partially molten reservoir extending for tens of kilometres, connecting it to neighbouring volcanoes through a vast magma network. If that's true, then these tremors may not belong to a single volcano at all but to an entire region communicating underground, a silent symphony of molten motion. Picture it, molten rock creeping through ancient fractures, pressurising hidden chambers, awakening a chain of volcanoes linked by fire. A geological orchestra tuning itself before the performance begins. Still, for all its intrigue, this does not yet mean an eruption is near. There are no visible emissions of sulphur dioxide or carbon dioxide, the typical warning gases. No measurable ground inflation, no dramatic heat spikes. What we are witnessing could be the very first phase of recharging, a slow gathering of energy that might take decades to culminate. The Earth's clock moves differently than ours. What feels urgent to us may be a single second, in its measureless time. But history has taught caution. The 1980 disaster began as nothing more than a swarm like this. In weeks it evolved into catastrophe. It is that memory, that thin veil between calm and chaos, that keeps volcanologists alert tonight. If you stand at the crater rim today, the silence is deafening. The jagged amphitheatre carved by the landslide looms like an open wound. Steam curls faintly from vents in the dome. Around it the forest has grown back, young, defiant, green, unaware of the forces shifting beneath its roots. Somewhere, nine kilometres below, gases are building, rocks are fracturing, magma is inching upward through the dark. Whether it reaches the surface or not, one truth remains. Mount St. Helens is alive, and it is thinking. Maybe it will fade again, content in its rest. Or maybe one day the same mountain that once split the sky will rise in fire, not in destruction, but renewal, fulfilling the endless rhythm of creation that defines this living planet. Until then, the question lingers in the mist. Is magma truly rising again beneath Mount St. Helens? Or is something older, something far greater, stirring in the heart of the Cascades? Whatever the answer, the story is not over. The tremors are merely the first lines of a new chapter, one that will test how much humanity truly understands about the restless power beneath our feet. Because the earth never forgets.
it only waits. So if you felt the rumble of this mystery, don't look away, stay curious, stay alert, and help others hear the whispers of our planet. Like, share, and subscribe, and tap that hype icon to push this investigation into wider light. Because somewhere under Washington's silent peaks, the next message is already rising, and soon the mountain will speak again.